In this video, we will cover multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is a chronic degenerative progressive disease of the central nervous system characterized by small patches of demyelination in the brain and spinal cord. Demyelination refers to the destruction of myelin. Myelin is the fatty and protein material that surrounds certain nerve fibers in the brain and the spinal cord. Demyelination or destruction of myelin results in impaired transmission of nerve impulses. MS is an autoimmune disease that affects the myelin sheath of the CNS, which means the immune system is actually attacking the myelin sheath found on the nerve. It affects the nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord and this leads to many sensory and motor type problems. Now we will see the pathophysiology. The cause of multiple sclerosis is not known, but a defective immune response probably plays a major role in neuron dendrites receive the signal needed to create some type of action. This signal goes to soma, which means body and this structure helps pass on the signal it just received from the dendrite to the rest of the neuron. Then the signal goes down and passes where the soma of the neuron and the axon connects at the axon hillock. Then the signal goes down to the long area known as the axon. For the axon to be able to deliver this signal properly to either another neuron, muscle or gland, it must be nicely be insulated and protected by the myelin sheath, which is made up of oligodendrocytes. These cells consist of fats and proteins. In multiple sclerosis, sensitized T cells inhabit the CNS and facilitate the infiltration of other agents that damage the immune system. The immune system attack leads to inflammation that destroys myelin and oligodendroglial cells that produce myelin in the CNS. Plagues of sclerotic tissue appear on demyelinated axons, further interrupting the transmission of impulses. Normally, sensitized T and B lymphocytes cross the blood-brain barrier. Their function is to check the CNS for antigens and then leave. In multiple sclerosis, sensitized T cells remain in the CNS and promote the infiltration of other agents that can damage the immune system. The immune system attack leads to inflammation that destroys the myelin, which insulates the axon and speeds the conduction of impulses along the axon and the oligodendroglial cells that produce myelin in the CNS. Demyelination interrupts the flow of nerve impulses and results in a variety of manifestations depending on the nerve affected. Plagues appear on demyelinated axons, further interrupting the transmission of impulses. Demyelinated axons are scattered irregularly throughout the CNS. The axons themselves begin to degenerate, resulting in permanent and irreversible damage. After the signal leaves the axon in a healthy neuron, it goes to the axon terminal where it synapses with another neuron, muscle or glands to cause an action. In multiple sclerosis, the signal is not being transmitted properly to the area that the nerve supplies because the myelin sheath has experienced demyelination. Because of this reason, we can expect to finding sensory type problems such as touch and vision. The patient may have a coordination, emotional, cognitive and bowel bladder issues. Next is causes of multiple sclerosis. First is benign cause, in which symptoms are so mild that patients do not seek health care or treatment. Next is relapsing remitting cause. A relapsing remitting disorder means the symptoms are at times worse and other times are improved or gone. Approximately 85% of patients with multiple sclerosis have a relapsing remitting cause. 50% of these patients progress to a secondary progressive cause in which disease progression occurs with or without relapses. With each relapse, recovery is usually complete. However, residual deficits may occur and accumulate over time, contributing to functional decline. Primary progressive multiple sclerosis is characterized by disease showing progression of disability from onset. 
വിത്ത് പി പി എം എസ് ന്യൂറോളജിക് ഫംഗ്ഷൻസ് ഗെറ്റ് സ്റ്റെഡ്ലി വേഴ്സ് ഇൻ ദ ബിഗിനിങ് ദർ ആർ നോ സിംറ്റംസ് ഫ്ലെയർ അപ്സ് ഓൾസോ കോൾ റിലാപ്സസ് ഓർ അറ്റാക്സ് ആൻഡ് ദർ ഈസ് നോ റിക്കവറി ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് റിമിഷൻ ഹൗ ഫാസ്റ്റ് ദ ഡിസീസ് പ്രോഗ്രസസ് മേ വെരി ഫ്ലെയറപ്സ് ആർ എപ്പിസോഡ്സ് ഓഫ് ഇൻക്രീസ്ഡ് ഡിസീസ് ആക്ടിവിറ്റി ഇൻ വിച്ച് ദ ബോഡി ഈസ് ഫൈറ്റിംഗ് ഇറ്റ് സെൽഫ് ഇൻ പ്രൈമറി പ്രോഗ്രസീവ് കോഴ്സ് ഡിസേബിളിംഗ് സിംറ്റംസ് സ്റ്റെഡ്ലി ഇൻക്രീസ് It may result in quadriparasis, cognitive dysfunction, visual loss and brain stem syndromes. Secondary progressive multiple sclerosis begins with an initial RR course followed by progression of variable rate which may also include occasional lapses and minor remissions. Over time, most patients with the RR course of multiple sclerosis progress to a secondary progressive course in which disease progression occurs with or without relapses. Next is progressive relapsing course. Progressive relapsing course shows progression from onset but with clear acute relapses with or without recovery. This course is least common. Only about 5% of this disease is seen. It is characterized by relapses with the continuous disabling progression between exacerbations. Approximately 15% of patients have a primary progressive cause in which disabling symptoms steadily increase, resulting in quadriparasis, cognitive dysfunction, visual loss and brainstem syndromes. The least common presentation is the progressive relapsing course. It is characterized by relapses with the continuous disabling progression between exacerbations. Next is signs and symptoms. Symptoms of multiple sclerosis are often unpredictable, varying from person to person and from time to time in the same person. Lesions can occur anywhere within the white matter of the CNS. Signs and symptoms are varied and reflect the location of the lesion or plague or combination of lesions. Primary symptoms such as fatigue, depression, weakness, numbness, difficulty in coordination, loss of balance and pain can be seen in some patients. Emotionally and cognitive symptoms such as a drain to the patient may be feel very weak, fatigued, depressed, trouble articulating speech, issues swallowing, mood swings. Patient may have trouble thinking, emotional liability that is uncontrollable, unpredictable mood and euphoria, extreme happiness. Sensation issues are involuntary tremors, spasms that is painful and strong, clumsiness, that is lack of skill that can lead to unintentional injury numbness or tingling face and extremities numbness and tingling can be seen electric shock sensation that travels down the body when moving head or neck in various position called lermit sign patient may be dizzy the muscles will be hard to move the patient may have stiffness that affects coordination the patient may be unable to be aware of body position when eyes are closed by knowing this we have to do the rhombic sign that is patient puts feet together and closes eye this causes them to sway some patient will have paresthesia impaired deep sensation impaired vibratory and position sense motor dysfunction the patient will have weakness tremor in coordination spastic weakness of the extremities and loss of abdominal reflexes patient will have ataxia and tremor visual disturbances such as nystagmus that is issues with the controlling eye movement the patient may have optic neuritis early signs and symptoms and seeing dark spots in vision painful when moving eye the patient may have a blurring of vision vision is gray dull colors the patient will have diplopia double vision patchy blindness that is scotoma and sometimes some patient may be totally blind the patient will have impaired speech that is slurring scanning that is dysarthria patient will have elimination issues urinary dysfunction such as hesitancy frequency urgency retention incontinence some patient will have upper uti urinary dysfunction affects about 90% of patients with multiple sclerosis and may exacerbate relapse of multiple sclerosis 
patient can't hold urine overactive bladder that is incontinence that leads to nocturia problems urinating resistance leads to retaining urine at a risk for UTIs and renal stones some patient will have bowel problems such as constipation diarrhea or incontinence symptoms can get worse due to heat heat can be because of the weather physical exercise that sign is called uto sign secondary manifestations related to complications are urinary tract infections constipation pressure ulcers contraction deformities dependent pedal edema patient may have pneumonia reactive depressions and osteoporosis emotional social marital economic and vocational problems exacerbations and remissions relapses may be associated with periods of emotional and physical stress next is assessment and diagnostic findings we have to assess several things because there is not one test can diagnose it assessing patient symptoms need to rule out other diseases mri to assess for lesions in the brain and spinal cord lumbar puncture assess spinal fluid for specific proteins called oligoclonal bands which are immunoglobulins if these are present it shows there is inflammation in the cns evoked potential studies that is electrical signals sent to the cns and sees the response and we will do urodynamic studies electrophoresis study of the cerebrospinal fluid to rule out abnormal immunoglobulin g antibody neuropsychological testing as indicated to assess cognitive impairment next is medical management because there is no cure exists for multiple sclerosis the goals of treatment are to delay the progression of the disease manage chronic symptoms and treat acute exacerbations management strategies target the various motor and sensory symptoms and effects of immobility that can occur radiation therapy may be used to induce immunosuppression medications vary depending on what symptoms the patient is having medications prescribed for multiple sclerosis include those for disease modification and those for symptom management disease modifying therapies are available to treat some of the different forms of multiple sclerosis many types of medications are used for symptom management in multiple sclerosis first we will see the disease modifying pharmacologic therapy the disease modifying medications reduce the frequency of relapse the duration of relapse and the number and size of plaques observed on mri in the rr form of ms but are not effective in the primary progressive type of ms medication interferon beta 1a that is rebif and interferon beta 1b that is beta seron may be given subcutaneously every other day another preparation of interferon beta 1a avonex may be given im once a week side effect of all interferon beta medications include flu like symptoms in approximately half of patients taking these drugs that cause patients to discontinue therapy for optimal control of disability disease modifying medication should be started yearly in the course of disease Next drug is glatiramer acetate that is copaxone also reduces the rate of relapse in the RR course of MS copaxone is given subcutaneously daily capoxone is an option for those with an RR course however it may take 6 months for evidence of an immune response to appear there are oral disease modifying agents that also reduce disease activity and disease progression terifluoramide that is obacchio fingolimod that is gilenia and dimethyl fumarate that is tecfidera these are the oral alternatives that may be better tolerated by the patient who have difficulty with injection reactions iv methyl prednisolone the key agent in treating acute relapse in the rr course 
shortens the duration of relapse but has not been found to have long term benefit it excess and inflammatory effects by acting on t cells and cytokines the medication is given as 1 g iv daily for 3 to 5 days followed by an oral taper of prednisolone side effects include mood swings weight gain and electrolyte imbalances the medication mitoxantron no one drone is given via iv infusion every 3 months mitoxantron can reduce the frequency of clinical relapses in patients with secondary progressive or worsening rrms patients must be very closely monitored for side effects that is cardiac toxicity and there is a maximum lifetime dose that can be given to the patient Next is symptom management pharmacologic therapy. Medications are also prescribed for management of specific symptoms. First medicine is baclofen. It is a gamma amino butyric acid agonist. It is the medication of choice for treating spasticity. It can be given orally or by intrathecal injection for severe spasticity. Benzodiazepines such as diazepam or Valium. tizanidin or sanaflex and dantrolene or dantrium may also be used to treat spasticity baclofen that is a skeletal muscle relaxants that act centrally also be given to the patient patients with disabling spasm and contractions may require nerve blocks or surgical interventions fatigue that interferes with activity of daily living is treated with amantadine that is simetral it is an antiviral and anti parkinsons drug but that can has cns effects this helps improve fatigue in ms patients another drug modafinil a cns stimulant also be given to the patient ataxia is a chronic problem most resistant to treatment medications used to treat ataxia include beta adrenergic blockers that is propanolol or introl and anticonvulsant agent gabapentin that is neurontin and benzodiazepines that is clonazepam or clonopin tremes are treated by propanolol that is a beta blocker isoniazid antibiotic used to treat infection especially tb helps with certain tremors in multiple sclerosis bladder and bowel problems are often difficult for patients and a variety of medications that is anticholinergic agents alpha adrenergic blockers and spasmodic agents may be given for bladder issues oxybutylene is given it is an anticholinergic that helps with an overactive bladder it relaxes bladder to prevent contractions bethanacol is a cholinergic that helps with completely emptying the bladder by helping bladder contract fully urinary tract infection may be superimposed on the underlying neurologic dysfunction absorbic acid that is vitamin c may be prescribed to acidify the urine making bacterial growth less likely antibiotic agents are prescribed when appropriate now let us see the nursing interventions Safety is very important for the patient because of the vision problem, coordination problem, decrease the perception with pain. We have to prevent symptoms from getting worse. Watch the heat. Keep room uh, cool always. Avoid heating blankets, pads, etc. because of decrease the perception with pain. Avoid getting infection, stressful events and getting too tired over exertion. Please out activities that take time to have many rest periods it is very important to maintain regular exercise as tolerated not too much because it can exacerbate symptoms swimming water aerobics keep energy and mood level up use assistive devices to help patient with walking and preventing injury when especially toileting and showering maintain clutter free environment especially when vision affected or experiencing vertigo scan environment if experiencing brightness in one eye or dark spots consult speech language pathologies it helps with speech if speech is slurred or hard to understand and the patient may have a difficulty swallowing also consult physical therapy for exercise and assistive devices support groups with others who have 
മൾട്ടിപ്പിൾ സ്ക്രോസിസ് മേക്ക് ആക്സസിബിലിറ്റി ടു ബാത്റൂം ഈസി ഡ്യൂ ടു ഓവർ ആക്റ്റീവ് ബ്ലാഡർ വി ഹാവ് ടു ടീച്ച് ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ടു ഡു സെൽഫ് കാത്ത് ഇഫ് ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ഈസ് ഹാവിങ് റിട്ടേണിങ് യുറിൻ പ്രിൻറ്റ് യുവർ ഫ്ലൂയിഡ്സ് ടു പ്രൊവൻസ് സ്റ്റാസിസ് ഓഫ് യുറിൻ ആൻഡ് ടു കീപ്പ് ഇറ്റ് ഫ്രം ബിക്കമിങ് ടു കോൺസെൻട്രേറ്റഡ് വൺ ടു ടു ലിറ്റർ ഓഫ് ഫ്ലൂയിഡ് ടു ബി ഗിവൺ ടു ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ഹൈ ഫൈവർ ടു പ്രൊവൻ കോൺസ്റ്റിപ്പേഷൻ ആൻഡ് സ്റ്റൂൾ സോഫ്റ്റ്നെസ് ആർ ഓൾസോ ടു ബി ഗിവൺ ടു ദ